Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. Big confusion about miracles. Some believe in miracles. Some think God is finished with miracles. Others believe in miracles, but seldom see them. One sleepless night, my guest, who saw no miracles, was given access to the realm of miracles. That erased all doubt. It erased all confusion. Next. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Is God ready to bring a tsunami wave of healing onto planet Earth today? Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Welcome, our most important guest, Holy Spirit. We know you're here already. We feel your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge that not only are you here, but you're taking over this entire broadcast. Let it be right from the throne of heaven. My guest, Frankie Masapika, had never experienced the healing power of God operating through him until recently. Frankie, what triggered the realm of miracles? You know, Sid, God has appointments in such a unique way of introducing the Holy Spirit and miracles to people. I was going to sleep one night and it was about midnight. I cannot fall asleep and I thought to myself, I'm going to download a book. I saw a cover of a book called Power of God and it was by Charles Finney. I didn't go to sleep until three o'clock in the morning and he started off his book in Luke 24, 49, he said, when Jesus told the disciples, go to Jerusalem and wait until you receive the promise of the Father, the endowment of power. And at that moment, I realized, I think out of my excitement, I jumped into ministry without waiting for the endowment of power. And after I read that book, my faith went up, my prayer life went up, and I began to believe that, yes, anyone can receive this endowment of power. And that's when I started believing. You know, there was a woman. That Her name was Lana. Yeah. Yes. Tell I me know. about Lana. So I had uh, only been pastoring our church for a little while. My wife and I planted our church. There was this lady in our church. She was a single mother. She was 41 years old. And I'll never forget, she, she called me up and I went to the hospital to visit her. And she says, I just found out I have stage four cancer. And she had never smoked a cigarette in her life. There was no reason for that cancer to be inside of her. And I told the Lord, I know you're going to heal her because she's a single mom and she's got a daughter of a 12 year old little girl. I know you're going to heal her. And we prayed and we prayed and I told her, you just stay strong. I know you're not strong enough to pray. I'll do the praying. And as much as I prayed, I was heartbroken. I was heartbroken because in spite of all the times that I prayed, I even checked myself into a hotel just to pray. She still passed away. And I thought to myself, God, I am tired of asking you to guide the hands of a doctor. I'm tired of asking you for that. I know you can heal them. Where is the gap? And then I realized at that moment that there is a difference between being a Christian and being a, a, having the power of God in you as a Christian that can ignite miracles. And that's when I said, I am going to pursue this power and, and re do exactly what the disciples did. They waited until they were filled with the power before they began the Great Commission. 
Well, Randy Clark, who uh, has verified more miracles than anyone I know, he really goes out of his way to verify these miracles, says about you, Frankie, that you were the hungriest man for God he ever met. Uh, you, you called out to his place one day, and what happened? Well, I started looking for pastors and ministers that were moving in the power and uh, of the Spirit and seeing healings. And I came across a YouTube channel where uh, Dr. Randy was on and he was talking about miracles. And he was talking about miracles like they happen all the day, uh, every day. And they were happening all the time for him. So I called up his ministry and I left the voicemail. And I said, my name is Frankie Mazapika. I pastor a church in the Woodlands, Texas. I just want one hour of his time. I'll fly anywhere in the country. I'll start on time. I'll end on time. I'll have my questions ready. And I By sat way, down with him. You see how hungry he was for God? That, that you can just hear that in the phone message he left. Yeah, I, I just, I needed to talk to someone that was, that had already experienced what I was longing to experience. I sat down and my first question was, can you be a Christian but yet still need the power of God? And he just smiled at me. And I've learned that if anyone older than 60 years old smiles at you, they know something you don't know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like how you're smiling at me right now. So I got a lot to learn from you. Um, but then he said, look, I want to bring you to Brazil and it'll answer all your questions and you'll begin to move in power and you'll see miracles. And I followed him all the way to Brazil. Now, you actually prayed for people in Brazil, and did they experience miracles? Yes, and you know what? I, my faith was so low at the time, I was hanging on to Dr. Randy's faith. He said, mm -hmm. pray for them, they'll be healed. And he prayed for me, and so the first person I prayed for, I, I laid my hand, he, he was playing soccer, and he had fractured bones in his feet. I laid my hands, and I said, in the name of Jesus, bones go back where they're supposed to be and they started going back under my fingers, and I only had less than a, a, a grain of salt of faith, and the Lord just said, Frankie, you've been crying out long enough, today's your moment. And then Dr. Randy said, look, I prayed for you, you received an impartation, I want you to go pray for all your prayer partners at your church, and do you know, more miracles and healings happen through our prayer partners than even through me. And that is just a confirmation that anyone can walk through that and experience the power of God. What would you say was one main fact you heard that the light bulb went on in your head? Or would you, you just were obedient to what Randy said because you figured he knew what he was talking about? So. I've been in the ministry for 25 years, full-time ministry. And what I had always done is when I pray for someone for healing and they don't get healed, then I just say, hey, I'm going to continue to believe. Um, I'm going to continue to believe with you. And I was done. Dr. Randy said, hey, Frankie, when you pray for a person and they don't get healed, pray for them again. And that thought never crossed my mind. I'll tell you what. How would you like to see Frankie pray for a blind person that got his eyesight back? We captured it on video. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. A botched surgery leaves a Jewish man paralyzed for life. He becomes deeply depressed, knowing that he'll be confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his days. But then he discovers a revelation that totally changes his life and leads him to be miraculously healed. He completely regains the ability to walk, even though 25 doctors, neurosurgeons, and neurologists can't explain this. Do you want to learn what this revelation was? For the ending to this true story, go to www.theythoughtforthemselves.com. Many viewers report testimonies as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I am 23 years old. I just wanted to commend you on your program. It's naturally supernatural. 
I listen to it almost every morning, and it's inspiring how you have devoted your life to searching and sharing the truth. I am touched and glad you do this show. If you've been touched watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. Frankie, you were so frustrated, and all of a sudden, it's like a switch was turned on. And you're praying, and people are having miracles all over the place. Uh, before we actually show a miracle taking place before your very eyes, set it up. This was in Costa Rica. Yes. One of our prayer partners, uh, they have a home in Costa Rica. And they said, hey, look, we have a lot of friends in Costa Rica. None of them have ever seen the power of God. They don't even know. In fact, they're Catholic. And I thought, well, this is going to be fun. Um, and so I went there, and it's my belief that you cry out in private and you take risks in public. So I cried out, God, you've got to be there. I know you love them. So I showed up to the house, and we're good. there was probably 30 people there. And I'm sharing the gospel of Yeshua, and I said, we're going to go for healing tonight. Because anywhere Jesus was, anywhere where our Messiah was, people got healed, and he's here tonight. And so um, we were about to go for healing, and this guy raises his hand, and he says, can, can Yeshua heal my eyesight? And I said, yes, he can. When you said that, was there a lot of trepidation behind the scene of the facade of what they see and hear? Were you nervous? Something so big, maybe, why couldn't it be a headache? <laughs> I, trepidation is, is probably not strong enough of a word. I was scared. Okay. I was so scared. I, I, I felt like a circle of sweat on my back, okay? <laughs> I was so scared. And so uh, he came forward, and I was praying for him, and he didn't get healed. I said, can you see? No. I thought, well, I'm going to pray for him again. Can you see? No. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know how many times I can do this. And I could feel the little bit of faith in the room. And in the room, they weren't Christians. They didn't believe in, in Jesus as our Messiah. I hadn't preached that yet. But I knew scriptures that if they saw miracles, people were drawn to, drawn to Jesus first from the miracles, and then they believe. And I thought, God, if you can heal this man's eyes, everybody in the room will begin to believe. I prayed for him a third time, and all of a sudden, he starts blinking. I said, can you see? He goes, no, I can't. I said, well, you're about to see in one minute. And faith just bursts up. He couldn't see, but I said, you're about to see right now in the name of Jesus, our Messiah, now. And I snapped my fingers. Stop. And, yes. I want you know, not to finish that story. Okay. I want you to see the video before your very eyes. Un momento muy especial para mi vida. He venido a esta reunión a compartir con el Pastor Franklin y con amigos y mi familia. Venía en un estado en el cual tengo mucha fe en Dios de que me voy a recuperar de mi vista porque con mi ojo derecho prácticamente no veía nada. Mi ojo izquierdo un porcentaje bastante poco, tanto que ya no puedo leer ni las cosas que leo. Eyes open in the name of Jesus. Open. Come alive. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Help me bien. What do you say? He sees well. Very well. Ask him. Ask him. What did he say? He says very well. Okay. Ask him if Jesus healed his eyes. Yes, he is. Some of the folks. Sí. Yes. Sí, he is healed. Yes, I feel. Healed. Healed. Yes. Can he see? Where? What's that? A lot. See, 
we were feeling that miracle with you on that video. Uh, you've written a new book, and I am so excited about this, but I want to know the story behind the story. Why did you write this new book? Well, I titled the book Your Divine Invitation because I sincerely believe, I know I said this earlier, but I sincerely believe that everyone has a divine invitation to move in healings and miracles. And I asked the Lord before I saw the first miracle, I said, Lord, will you please use me as an example of someone who's seeing no miracles at all and then begins to start seeing miracles. And so when I began to see it, I started realizing that the Holy Spirit was leading me through the scriptures and showing me what Jesus was doing. And then when I, I grasped it and I understood it, I thought to myself, I need to share the process, the practical steps that I took so that everyone can take these practical steps. And you know, one of them, if we're going to pray, we need to pray fervently or don't pray at all. Because Charles Spurgeon said it best. He said, prayer without fervency is like hunting with a dead dog. Hmm. There's so one. many that you brought out. Now, I've been praying for years, yeah. but there's things that I have learned. For instance, I like this slide, be too desperate to stop. Yes. Tell me about that. You know, there's certain things that can cause desperation. Number one is if you get exposed to what's possible, then that can cause you to be desperate. And I just want to just look into the camera just for a moment. And I want to say the only reason why you're watching this show, there's so many shows on TV, but you're watching this show right now because you're most likely drawn to the name of the show. It's supernatural. And the reason why you're drawn to the name of the show is because God's pulling you towards himself to move in the supernatural. And you know, while we were watching that video, I just had this word of knowledge. And, and a word of knowledge is when the Lord just gives you a, a, a spark, a thought that says, okay, this is what I want to do right now. And, and I just had this thought that some of you, you're having ringing in your ears and it's tormenting you. And I believe that when I pray for you right now, that that ringing is going to stop. And in the, and I want to say this as well, before I pray for you, I want you to notice I'm going to pray a commanding prayer because that's how Jesus prayed. So in the name of Jesus, that ringing stop now in the name of Jesus, your inner ear, your middle ear, your outer ear, be healed now in the name of Jesus, our Messiah. Frankie is fully expecting you to have a miracle and for you to be equipped to pray for others to have miracles. Sound good? Does to me. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. Many viewers report testimonies as a result of watching It's Supernatural. While watching one of your programs on TV, your speaker prayed for healing for someone's shoulder, and I claimed that healing. My right shoulder had been hurting, and I could not sleep on my right side. After his prayer, I have had no more problems sleeping on my right side. 
If you've been touched watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, about 50 years ago, I had the greatest miracle that ever happened in my life. And I'll make you a promise. I'm going to pray right now, and you will have the greatest miracle that ever happened in your life. Knowing God, having God, the creator of the universe, live inside of you, have him direct your life, there's nothing that's a close second. Many of you believe in Jesus, many don't. But if you'll say this prayer and mean it to the best of your ability, even if you believe in Jesus, you may not know him. You may not have had experiential knowledge with him. Repeat out loud right after me. Dear God, Dear God I'm, a I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. And I am clean because Jesus died to make me clean. And now that I'm clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me. Let me know you. I make you my Lord. And save here. Frankie, pray. Yes. As I'm praying for you, I believe that miracles and healings are going to ignite in your soul. Holy Spirit, right now, begin to build their confidence and give them boldness now to step out, to lay their hand on someone and say, in the name of Jesus, our Messiah, give them boldness. And Lord, right now, I speak into their life that they will see fruit, they will see signs, and they will see, see you move. And I rebuke discouragement or distraction. Walk boldly as you move forward in healings and miracles because it's coming through you now in the name of Jesus. And while he was praying, God also gave me words of knowledge. A wrist is healed. If, you'll, if there, you have a pain or any discomfort in your wrist, you broke it, whatever, just start moving it. You'll see it move right into it. There's something about a little finger going on right now, and a hip is being healed, and a back is being hit. Boy, there's such a flow. You probably could run into these words of knowledge. You hearing anything? Yes, you know, um, I just I feel like there's someone's right eye. You're something's right eye, and you know, I, I'm not. I don't want to get too specific, but it's just this pain behind your eye. And just like Sid said, if you step out in an action, just start blinking it, or cover your good eye and just stare through the eye that you're challenging with, or just blink it. I'm telling you now, or even by faith, lay your fingers on your eye and say, "Thank you, Jesus." and you'll be healed right now. I believe that, and I know it to be true. In Jesus' name. God is so good, and no more, no more superstars. We already have a superstar. It's Messiah in you, the hope of glory. And what is impossible for Messiah? Nothing. <laughs> Life can seem to glide by in a monotonous rhythm of daily activities. You wake, you shower, you dress, you take care of others and make sure they have all they need, you commute to work, you work hard for eight hours, maybe nine, maybe ten, you commute back home, you cook dinner, you watch some television, you go to bed. It's the same predictable cycle, day after day, month after month, year after year. You wonder, is this all there is to life? The truth is that change is available. There is a greater purpose for your life, something only you can do. There's a plan, a guiding map that has been there since before you were even born. There's a path that was created for you, which you alone can take. 
day by day, hour by hour, if you choose to pursue it, your destiny will be revealed. The invitation is there. Will you discover all that life has for you? Do you want to find out what you were truly created for? Do you want more? Are you hungry to discover your purpose? We would love to provide you with a powerful book that will show you the way. Get a free online download of the book, They Thought for Themselves, by logging onto the website, theythoughtforthemselves.com. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hi, I'm Rabbi Kurt Schneider. Yeshua didn't just fulfill the old covenant, he filled it up with meaning. Join me on the next It's Supernatural with Sid Roth. I'm going to show you some things you may have missed in the old covenant pertaining to Yeshua's first coming and his return.